Hey everyone, welcome to the last video for section 7.7. .7. So in this video, what we're going to do is take a single example and run it through all the theory, theoretical stuff we've talked about throughout this section, just to hopefully have it all make more sense, put it all together, and show you how you can use it to solve all these different types of problems. So let's go ahead and jump right into this example. So for this example, we want to consider the system x prime equals 5 minus 1, 2, 2, x. And what I want to do from this is I want to start by doing all the theory stuff and then we'll use it to solve the problem at the end. So I want to find a fundamental matrix, B, find the fundamental matrix with phi of zero is the identity, find a matrix T such that T inverse A T is diagonal. Where I'm going to call A this matrix here, 5 minus 1, 2, 2. And then D, use parts B and C to solve this equation with x of 0 equals 2, 3. All right, let's go ahead and get at it. So to find a fundamental matrix, what do I need? I need my general solution to find the fundamental matrix. So let's just start by finding the general solution and then build up from there. So find general solution. So that means I need eigenvalues. So the determinant of five minus r minus one to two minus r equals five minus r two minus r plus two, which is r squared minus seven r plus 10 plus two, r squared minus seven r plus 12, which is r minus four, r minus 3. So my eigenvectors here, values here, sorry, my eigenvalues are 4 and 3. So let's look at r equals 4. Then I'm looking to solve, if I plug in r to be 4 up here, 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, x1, x2 equals 0. So I only need the first equation, x1 minus x2 equals 0. So x1 equals 1, x2 equals 1. And 1, 1 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 4. Now let's look at r equals 3. So if r equals 3, I end up with 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1. x1, x2 equals 0. So again, only the only one equation. 2x1 minus x2 equals 0. So if I set x1 to be 1, I get x2 has to be 2. So I get that 1, 2 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 3. So then from all that, what is my general solution? So my general solution then is x of t equals c1, 1, 2, e to the 3t plus c2 times 1, 1, e to the 4t. I'm gonna switch the, I switched the order there to match my notes that I have on this. So how do I get a fundamental matrix? So a fundamental matrix comes from stacking these up into a matrix is this guy. X of T equals stack him into a matrix. E to the 3T, 2 E to the 3T. And then here, E to the 4T, E to the 4T. And if you check, the determinant of X is negative E to the 7T which is not zero. So we're good. That is a fundamental matrix for our system and our round scan thing worked out. This is the answer to part A. Now for part B, I want the one that had that at zero becomes the identity. Because this one doesn't. If I plug in zero here, I get one, two, one, one, or one, one, two, one, depending on which order you put it in, I don't get the identity. I want now I want special solutions to this equation. So for B, need to find special solutions. Namely those with value 1, 0 and 0, 1 at t equals 0. So what is x in terms of my general solution when I evaluate at 0? Well, I had c1 times 1, 2 times e to the 0 plus c2 times 1, 1 e to the 0. So this is if I put it into a single vector, since either both E0s are both 1, C1 plus C2, and then 2C1 
plus C2. Now to meet 1, 0, I can take C1 equals minus 1 and C2 equals 2. I will let you figure out how to work that out. Basically, you just have a simple equation to solve it. And this is what you get for your solution is that. And to meet 0, 1, I can take C1 equals 1, C2 equals minus 1. So I get two new solutions. My two solutions are the following. I get x1, which is going to be to meet 1, 0. So I'm going to take negative 1 and 2 for my constants. So I'm going to get negative 1 times 1, 2, e to the 3t, plus 2 times 1, 1, e to the 4t which if I put this together gives me a 2 e to the 4t minus e to the 3t and a 2 e to the 4t minus 2 e to the 3t. And my x2 is taking 1 and minus 1. So 1 times 1, 2 e to the 3t minus 1 times 1, 1 e to the 4t, which would do the same thing again, gives me an e to the 3t minus e to the 4t 2e to the 3t minus e to the 4t. And so now to make my special fundamental matrix, I want to put these two guys into a matrix. So then my matrix phi is going to be this guy. 2e to the 4t minus e to the 3t. 2e to the 4t minus 2e to the 3t. e to the 3t minus e to the 4t. 2 e to the 3t minus e to the 4t. Because I put my x1 here, and I put my x2 here. Now to verify, if I plug in t equals 0, what do I get? I get 2 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, 2 minus 1. I get the identity matrix. So we did our job here, and that is part b. Finding the fundamental matrix that has that property, where the value at 0 is the identity matrix. How do we do that one? Well, we knew our general solution, so we just had to pick the appropriate constants C1 and C2 to meet the right initial conditions to make this happen. So there is part B. We'll come back to him in a little bit later. Now for part C, I want to find a matrix that I can use to diagonalize A. So find T such that T inverse AT is diagonal. We know how this works, right? We want matrix T to be the eigenvectors, and D is the eigenvalues on diagonal. So I gotta go find my eigenvectors. And what are my eigenvectors? If I scroll back up, my eigenvectors here are 1, 2 with eigenvalue 3, and 1, 1 with eigenvalue 4. So if I go back down, what I want is t is going to be the matrix 1, 2, 1, 1, and d is going to be 3, 0, 0, 4. Because eigenvector 1, 2 corresponds to eigenvalue 3, eigenvalue 1, 1 corresponds to eigenvalue 4. So 1, 2 corresponds to 3, and 1, 1 corresponds to 4. And now once you have this written out, you don't have to prove anything for this. You don't have to prove that it diagonalizes it or anything. We just always know that this does that. So now, part D. I want to solve the equation with x of 0 equals 2, 3 using both methods. So the method from part B, I know my solution x of t is going to be phi of t times x of 0 because phi of 0 is the identity. So this is the matrix that we had way up there, which I'm just going to write again, times our initial condition 2, 3. And now if we carry out this multiplication, what I'm going to get is the following. I'm going to get 2 times the first guy, so 4e to the 4t minus 2e to the 3t, plus 3 times the second guy, 3e to the 3t minus 3e to the 4t. And the bottom row, I get 2 times the first guy, 4e to the 4t minus 4e to the 3t, plus 3 times the, the last guy. 6e to the 3t minus 3e to the 4t. And if I collect terms, I see that on the top I have an e to the 4t plus an e to the 3t. And on the bottom, 
I have a e to the 4t plus a 2e to the 3t. If you plug in t equals 0, you will see that you get actually get 2, 3 here. So we're in good shape there. All right, that solves it the first way using the fundamental matrix. Now I want to solve it using diagonalization. So I want to set x equal to t times y, where t is the matrix that we had earlier. So t is going to be 1, 2, 1, 1. And then our d was 3, 0, 0, 4. So that y solves y prime equals d times y, which then turns into, when I split this up, y1 prime equals 3y1, y2 prime equals 4y2. So I can solve these for to get that y1 of t equals y1 of 0 e to the 3t and y2 of t equals y2 of 0 e to the 4t. Now I need my y1 of 0 and y2 of 0. And how do I get those guys? Well, I can just solve this of equations. So to find y1 of 0, y2 of 0, we know x equals ty. So what does that mean? If I just plug in t equals 0 to that equation, I get that x of 0, so x0 equals t times y of 0. So 2, 3 equals 1, 1, 2, 1 times y1 of 0, y2 of 0, because this is what I want for my x's. So now let me solve this out. I get that y1 of 0 plus y2 of 0 equals 2. And then 2y1 of 0 plus y2 of 0 equals 3. This we can easily see is solved by y1 of 0 equals 1, y2 of 0 equals 1. So this tells me that I end up with y1 of t equals e to the 3t, and y2 of t equals e to the 4t. And now we can solve for my x by multiplying by t again. So x equals ty equals 1, 1, 2, 1 times e to the 3t e to the 4t, which becomes an e to the 3t plus e to the 4t. And on the bottom, I get a 2 e to the 3t plus e to the 4t. So as we get there, and if you check, this solution is, de is exactly the same as the one we got up here. So we solved this problem twice by so completely different methods and got the same answer, which is a good sign. It means we're on the right track and we did the right thing. All right. That's it for this video. There is a full example of all the details worked out, how this theory sort of comes together, how you can solve equations using this sort of theory, and then you really get the same answer no matter what you do, which is really how this class should work, right? You should always get the same answer no matter what you do because you're solving an actual problem. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.